my gosh, I wish I had had this video that I'm filming for you right now, like three weeks ago, because I got hacked big time. I lost my personal Facebook, my professional Facebook, and my professional Instagram. Boom, gone in under 10 minutes. I am going to tell you how to avoid this fate for your art business. Don't make the same mistakes I did, please. This is your warning, this is your chance. So here's four things I learned from being hacked and the things that I wish I had done differently and some things I'm glad I already did so that you don't have to go through the same pain and suffering that I did. If this is your first time here, welcome to Shaking Bird Art. My name is Shelby Lynn and I am a professional artist. I enjoy creating videos about art tutorials, brand reviews, products, and art business advice. So if you have any ideas or requests for new videos, just drop those in the comments below and I will make them happen. And a quick thank you to all my Kofi supporters for buying me coffees. I really appreciate it and I'm feeling the love. Thank you. If you would like to support my channel by buying me a coffee, I will leave my link, my, my Kofi.com link in the description below. All funds go directly back into the channel to help me keep on creating better and more helpful videos. So here's the story. About three weeks ago, I got a notification of an unusual login to my Facebook account or somebody that was attempting to log into my Facebook account, I think it was. And I wasn't sure if it might have been spam. I wasn't sure if it was an actual notification or not, so I didn't pay too much attention to it. But within a few minutes, somebody was posting illegal videos on my personal page, my personal Facebook page. And by illegal, I mean horrible things. Like I wish I hadn't seen them. I saw two things um, when they were posted. And I'm not going to say exactly what they are because I don't want to trigger another algorithm that will shut this video down. But let's just say, I wish I hadn't seen those images. But within seconds, literally seconds of this person spamming my personal Facebook page, Facebook's algorithms caught, caught on to it and they disabled my page like that. And because my business Facebook and Instagram for Shaking Bird Art were linked to my personal one, those got shut down as well just because they're linked. Literally, from the time somebody was trying to get into my Facebook to the time I was disabled, it was less than 10 minutes. So I really didn't have a lot of time to react. And even if I had known what was going on at the time, and if I had been smart, I don't know if I could really have done anything, done anything about it. I began the big desperate journey of trying to recover my accounts from this situation. And long story, long and painful story, very short, there's nothing you can do. All I was able to do was to send, I was able to send Facebook a picture of my ID to prove that I did actually own the account. But all that tells Facebook's algorithms is that I own the account, not that I'm not the person who posted those horrible things. And there, I mean, you can try calling Facebook. There, there are like two customer service numbers, which you will find an automated message on the other end saying that you can't talk to anybody on this number. They have no customer service email. They've got no chat support. I, for my Instagram, I was, I found an option to appeal the decision but you can't appeal the decision unless you're logged in and you can't log in if you're disabled. So yeah, that was fun. Um, I'm not gonna bore you with all the details of the things that I tried to get my accounts back. The end of the story is, is that I was not able to get my accounts back and they were deleted. I'm, yeah, all my followers gone, all my conversations gone, all my photos and postings gone because some you know this some horrible person thought it would be funny I guess to ruin somebody else's career so now I am building my accounts back up from scratch it's 
been a journey, it's been a trip, but I'm not here to complain about the situation. I'm here to tell you about what I learned from it, what I wish I had known and paid attention to before, and how you can protect yourselves from having this happen to you too, because I don't want anybody to go through what I just did. Because if there's one thing I learned from the situation is if it happens to you, you are absolutely powerless, you've got no voice, and there's nothing you can do about it. So prevention is the best way. Number one, turn on two-step verification for everything that you have that it is available for. It is really easy to do. Just go into your settings, usually under security and password and things like that, and then it'll say two-step verification. What that does is you have the option to set up either a phone number or a, an email address usually, or some form of secondary account, where when somebody, whether it's you or somebody else, if they're trying to sign into your account, you will get a notification on this second device and you can either click, yes, this is me, or no, it's not. Sometimes that means they'll send you a code you have to enter, you know, different companies, it'll be slightly different, but it's really easy to turn on. It's not that difficult to deal with, you know, when it's on and it could save your backside if somebody who isn't you is trying to get into your account. Number two, create unique, complicated passwords for every account. Don't reuse the same password. I knew this, I've always known this, and I ignored it from day one. I liked my, you know, like three or four different passwords that I always used. And the thing is, is if a hacker hacks one password, they are going to go through all your accounts that they can find and try it on those as well. I was super lucky in that all that was hacked was my social media. They did not get my banking, my shopping, or anything else. That's it. So in that sense, thank you, God. I was so lucky. And I immediately, when this happened, I went and changed every password I could think of on everything. Just because I used to, you know, I, I, I don't like passwords. I don't remember passwords. I used to reuse the same one all the time. Don't do that. Use a unique password for everything. Write them down. If you don't remember them, write them down in a notebook. Save them to your keychain on your device or whatever you need to do. Don't use the same password. And I will leave a uh, link to an article in the description below to help you find good passwords, tips on how to avoid bad passwords, ways to remember your passwords, That's kind of, that kind of thing. I will leave an article for you that will be very helpful, hopefully. Tip number three, make sure you've got more than one way to contact your clients. I had multiple clients and students whom the only one, the only way I had to communicate with them was either through Facebook or Instagram. So when those went down, I had no way to find them again. I had a couple people, uh, thank goodness, thank goodness, I had names written down in a ledger. So I was able to find a lot of them right away. There were a couple people I could not find again on my social media. So I actually ended up sending them invoices for like a dollar on PayPal and Venmo so that I could actually put a note attached saying, hey, I got hacked, I'm right here, please, you know, here's my number, contact me. <laughs> so always make sure you have a backup form of communication if you lose your primary form. So now I'm asking everybody for their phone numbers and or email addresses. Just in case this ever happened again, I can still get in contact with that client because, you know, it would be awkward to have a deposit on a portrait and then all of a sudden the artist is gone. Like, that's sketchy, right? It's not my fault. Make sure you've got more than one way to contact clients and students. Tip number four, if you are a commissioned artist, make sure that all details of commissions are written down in another place. So let's say you've had a conversation on Facebook and they commission you for a piece. Write all that down in another notebook or a document or something so that that Facebook or Instagram conversation is not the only record of it. I'm really glad I already did this. I have a separate uh, notebook that I write down all details on price, size, um, number of subjects, deadlines, payment information, payments received, 
anything you can think of relevant to the project, write it down. Oh, and uh, the client's name and any forms of contact you've got for them. Write them down either in a physical notebook or a document that is not linked to your social media and can't be hacked. So if you lose that first line of communication, you have a record of that conversation elsewhere and everything that was agreed to because I book multiple months out in advance. I'm booking right now, I'm booking portraits for Christmas and it's at the time this video is being made, it's the end of July. So I don't remember everything that far out. So I need to have all those details written down. And if I had lost, like if I hadn't had all those written, how would I even know how much I'd been paid, you know, or how big it was supposed to have been? It's, it would have been, <laughs> you can imagine the mess. So those are the four big things that I learned from being hacked. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any additional tips, I would love to hear them. If I get enough good tips, I will add them to another video because this is so important. Please share this video. Let's spare some other artists pain and suffering and let's defeat the horrible hackers before they have a chance to hack. And I hope to see you soon in another video. Bye.